to the next in our webinar series. Um, today we're pleased to present to you the KPIs and benchmarking for the Modern Practice webinar and that's going to be delivered by Matthew Robinson from RSM Australia. Before I hand over to Matthew, just a couple of small housekeeping points. We have everybody muted this afternoon just so that we can minimise any background noise but we do encourage you to ask us any questions or chat to us. We can keep an eye on those boxes throughout the session. Um, Matthew might respond to questions as he goes along or he might save some of them for the end of the webinar. Um, but other than that, I'll hand you over to Matthew now so he can get into the webinar. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for that, Beth, and welcome to the webinar. Thanks for giving up your, your lunch break to come and sit in on a, on a webinar session on KPIs. I'm hoping that everyone can hear me out there. Uh, if there are any problems, uh, I think you have an icon that you can raise your hand and I'll, I'll keep an eye out on that one there. So just before we kick off, just a little bit of a, a background. Who is RSM? Well, RSM, we're a full service accounting firm that's part of a large international network. Although we are a large accounting firm, we have a strong local and regional presence. You might have known us by a former name, Bert Cameron. As a firm of accountants, uh, we have built our business by being accessible locally to our clients. It is true that the digital world is changing the way all of us do business. However, there are some things that you just can't replace, like the face-to-face -face meeting and a friendly handshake. I imagine this is something that certainly medical practices are going through at the moment with the likes of uh, appointments being able to be conducted over Skype, etc. and so on. And the fact is the digital world is changing uh, what we do with business. So where do I fit into the RSM network? I'm part of our Mandra Rockingham team, providing both advisory and consulting services to local businesses. My experience has been gained not only from working in practice, but also from working for uh, Landcorp, which is our state, uh, government land developer and also Formula One is in the uh, motor car racing. Uh, you know, working for large corporates has given me a passion to see small businesses access uh, the skill and financial excellence that have typically only been available to large corporates. Hence why I'm here today presenting on KPIs. So we'll get, get into this. KPIs and benchmarking for the modern practice. Now, our key focus areas for today uh, line up to what would have been mentioned on the actual invite to this webinar. Firstly, we're going to kick off with how KPIs connect to practice improvement. And in doing that, we're going to look at the business of medical practices uh, and just sort of cite some examples of what's going on out there in the marketplace. We're going to look at some core business principles. So how can we connect the business principles to what you do? And believe it or not, we're going to touch on some accounting 101 as well, but I'll try not to bore you too much with that. Uh, then we'll move into the target rate. We'll look at what is the target rate? What is this concept about the target rate? We'll have a bit of a look and unpack that through the cost function, output activity, and your break-even point. From there, we, we launch into KPIs and benchmarking. And this is all connected. It's because it's all part of running a business, and it's all part of getting the best out of the business, out of the practices that you guys run. So with the KPIs and benchmarking, we'll look at some suggested financial and uh, non-financial KPIs. And finally, we'll close out with analysing the data. Um, I'll go through a bit of a management report example so you can see you know, how you could pull your management reports together and it might give you some ideas about what you could do to perhaps change the way you do management reports in your practice. Plus also we'll go through some tips to improve uh, the efficiency and effectiveness of your business. So what about yourself? What are your outcomes? Uh, you know, I've found that when you attend a webinar, when you attend any form of training, it's always, you've always got some sort of expectation. So what I'd like to do is probably just take a bit of a minute now where you can jot down what you're expecting to learn uh, from today. I'm happy you to throw that up onto the question board if you like, um, or even just let me know where you're dialing in from. If you can't think of anything that you're wanting to get out from today, just uh, uh, pop on there and say, hey, I'm calling in from uh, Upper Whoop Whoop or somewhere. Um, so I'll let you jot these things down. Uh, certainly put down uh, when you're going to um, put into action what you've learned from today and a bit of an action plan on how you're going to put that uh, into action. So, you know, don't, don't sort of walk away from today without having a bit of a plan on, hey, I can take this information and use it to improve the practice. All right, we'll keep moving on. So the business of medical practices. 
you know, GP medical practice is a big business. They contribute over $12 billion worth of revenue to our economy per annum. Um, over the last five years, they've achieved a growth rate of 4% per annum. Uh, they employ over 67,000 people across the nation. And importantly, they, on average, the businesses nationally are achieving a, a bottom line return of 26%. That's an important one just to, um, and that's after practitioner earnings. And that's an important one just to sort of jot that one down because it's good to sort of benchmark yourself and say, well, what should our practice be earning? Well, here's a bit of a, a bit of a flag to say this is the average across Australia. Um, in 2015, we had over 3,000 students commence their medical undergraduate. Um, and uh, surprisingly enough, less than half of the business owners have a succession plan out there. Now, this stat surprised me somewhat, given the size of this business sector. Uh, but what has this got to do with KPIs? Well, KPIs will help to demonstrate the financial viability and also the value of your practice. And I've heard it said out there that medical practices, there's no value in them. There's value in the buildings, there's value in, in you know, the assets that you own, but typically no real goodwill value in the medical practice. However, as we see, the, the corporate sector are certainly very interested in, in this part of the business world. So I think when you start to look at the KPIs, you start to demonstrate that financial viability of, of what is going on in your business. And also important when you're considering handing on the baton over to the next generation of doctors. Um, so it's good to, to understand where that value is. In terms of uh, general practitioners, doctors in Australia, um, so as, as of 2015, we had over 22,000 doctors. 72% of these were in our major cities and 28% were in the regional centres. Now, that that seems quite like a, a bit of a disparate um, uh, stat there, but if we zoom back 10 years ago, only 26% uh, was in the regional centre. So we've, we've got a stronger regional presence than probably what we did a, a decade ago, but it still isn't the, as strong as the major cities. Um, and also, if we look at uh, how many doctors we have per head of population, uh, a decade ago, we had 72 doctors per 100,000 uh, head of population in Australia. Um, as of 2015, there was 92 doctors. So we've seen that stat grow over the last decade as well. So there's more doctors servicing our nation um, than there was 10 years ago. And just some general practitioner stats from 2014-15, and I won't labour this point too much. Uh, just quickly, NRA stands for non-referred appointments. These are, the, these are the appointments where a patient will call up and say, hey, I want to see Dr. Uh, Dr. Mary um, and, and book an appointment that way. Um, now, a doctor will care for over, on average, a thousand patients per annum who will visit them roughly six times per annum. Um, assuming uh, four weeks of annual leave per doctor, the average doctor would have about 25 consults a day. So how does that compare to your practice? Are you seeing that that's the sort of booking load that you get for your doctors or are you seeing it's more or less? And again, these are some stats that you can look at. These were pulled together by the Department of Health, so it's readily accessible to anyone. It's just a matter of being able to drop the data out and, and be able to uh, put it in a way that you can compare it against your practice. Also bearing in mind, this is only dealing with uh, the, the bulk billing side of uh, medical practice. It's not the private billing, so the Department of Health doesn't track that information. If we look at the uh, major corporates out there, primary healthcare are one of those major players out there. And they're certainly interested in medical centres. Uh, it contributes, uh, based on their 2015 results, 20% uh, of their business is coming in from medical centres. Um, and they, they have a plan to continue to grow in that area. I, I did hear, uh, I did read that these large corporates, now I don't know if it's primary healthcare or who it was, but they refer to doctors as income generating units. So for these corporates, it's all about business. And if they're looking at it from that perspective, then that to me suggests that there is some form of value that does sit inside your local GP practice. Uh, now primary healthcare are in the business of uh, making a return for their shareholders and providing a, a service to, um, to to the nation, I suppose. Um, uh, but they've got a strategic growth model and it, and it includes to develop new income streams around data analytics. Now these data analytics, this is the information that you capture every day about your patient in your various medical databases. And it's important to understand the power of that information that sits there. So again, when we tie back to the value of a practice, information has a lot of value to it. Um, these guys are taking it that next step where they're looking at 
how can they connect more readily with their consumers out there? And they're looking at that digital space for e-health. Um, and you can see that their, their bottom line, um, uh, their bottom line is actually 31%. So when we look at that 26% average for GP practices across Australia, primary health are delivering at 31%, which is quite a strong return on a uh, medical practice. Contrast that with health scope, where health scope are actually um, only running 14%. So their bottom line is not as good. So they've got some tweaks that they need to make to their model. Um, in terms of medical centres, it's only making up 2.5% of their business. But it's, it's a space that they're looking at growing in. And that's evidenced by their strategic plan, where they're looking at certainly maximising the number of consults. And their focus is around reducing costs and strengthening their, lease, uh, their links to, to hospitals and private health insurance funds. HealthScope are in the business of running private hospitals. So what they're looking at is saying, well, can we connect the private hospitals that we run to medical centres out there? Um, obviously doing it in, in a legal and, and transparent fashion. But this is painting the picture that for you guys locally, the corporates are interested in what you do. Um, and, and there is a business there behind it. So how can you make your practice better? Well, KPIs is something that really lays in and gives you that, uh, that ability to compete against uh, these other players in the market space. What are some of the business disruptors that we're experiencing out there at the moment? Well, as we're all aware, there's been that freeze on the uh, government rebates, on the Medicare rebates, um, and that does impact business. Technology is another one of those disruptors. Uh, as an accountant in, in my profession, I'm seeing technology having a big impact on the way we do business and the way you know we can receive information. It, it means people are expecting things more immediately and there's not that time that uh, people are willing to wait for informational results or solutions. Um, the next generation of doctors appears to be a bit of a business disruptor uh, because we're seeing that the next generation of doctors aren't as willing to uh, buy into a practice like their, their counterparts did, like their, their predecessors did, who um, you know, would set up a practice and, and would set themselves up there for you know, the next uh, 20, 30, 40 years. Um, the next generation of doctors seem to be wanting to chase that lifestyle and, and not wanting to be tied down. So that does have an impact on the local medical practice. Um, the ageing population has an impact, it's a bit of a disruptor as our population gets older, there, gets, there becomes more of a demand on the services um, and if they're not adapting to things like technology then that can be a disruptor in terms of us moving towards the, that, that digital space. Uh, corporatisation of GP medical practices is also a bit of a disruptor out there as the big corporates come in, buy out practices, buy out patient lists etc and so on, it changes the way business is being done. And their, one of their primary focuses is, is certainly on the uh, bottom line. Uh, and also patients bypassing uh, the local doctor. So currently your GP sits as central to the medical system and there's certainly been studies out there suggesting that that's a, a very important role within our community. Uh, but pharmacies, you know, for example, are potentially taking away some of that market share by providing different um, things for uh, patients out there, like medical certificates, et cetera. So those are some disruptors, and that's, that's the business of medical practices. You know, we can go more into that, but it's more just to paint a bit of a picture. So that way you can say, well, how does this connect to me, and how does this connect to KPIs? So let's have a look at some core business principles. Let's lay a bit more of a foundation around this. So when we look at a business, a business is made up of, of multiple elements. You've got, in this instance, you've got your vision, your strategy, your structure, your culture. Now, these will form the strategic elements of your business. Um, then over on the right hand side we've got our products and services, our marketing and sales, our people, systems and processes and finances. These form the operational elements of your business. Um, now they're not mutually exclusive, they work hand in hand and the bridge between the two actually is the KPIs. So when we set a strategy, how do we know we're achieving our strategy? When we set a, a desired culture, how do we know we're achieving that desired culture? When we set a vision, how do we know we're on track with that vision? Or when we structure our practice in such a way, how do we know that that's been effective? Well, all the operational elements and how they, um, how they play out in our business will be the insight into that and the KPIs become the bridge. So our strategy will set some benchmarks and targets on what we want to achieve and where we want to take the business and the operational elements then become the live uh, feedback of data into the business to say, well, you know, we said that we wanted to be, uh, have an average wait time of, um, of patients of uh, say less than five minutes and we're currently sitting at six minutes. So 
So that's a feedback to say, well, we're not quite hitting that benchmark or that target. What do we do about it? So with the strategic elements, typically these are set by the directors or the business owners. They focus, they have a long-term focus. They look at, say, the next five years. And they're made up of vision, which is the purpose of your business, your strategy, which is how you will achieve your purpose, your structure, which is the framework for achieving this purpose, and your culture, which really more or less tells you whether or not you're achieving your purpose. You know, if you if you if you look at say one of your one of your core visions is is to have you know strong loyalty to uh, the local community um, and to to the uh, practice itself. Yet you've got a staff turnover that you don't see anyone stay more than say 18 months. Then the culture of your business is saying that you're not meeting that vision objective there. When we look at the uh, operational elements, uh, typically this is the application of the strategy by management. So this is your day-to-day -day stuff, but the, the strategy should influence what you do in your day-to-day -day because the reason why we set up our practice as, um, say, uh, you know, the, the private billings versus the bulk billings is because it, it's, it's dictated by what our strategy is and what we want to uh, provide as a service to the community. Uh, normally has a shorter focus, so when we're looking at these elements, we look at focusing on the next 12 months. Uh, mainly because it's like our budget period, it's more predictable and it's easier to set targets over that 12 months and then address and deal with that. Are we on track with that target Are we or not? The longer your target is, the harder it is to figure out whether or not you're on track with that target um, you know, or whether you're lagging behind. Uh, the elements that make up our operational uh, part of our business is the products and services. That's what you sell. Uh, you know, whether that's uh, consultations with patients or there might be uh, some products that you have just on the counter where patients can buy um, um, various bits and pieces to, to help them with their healthcare. Uh, marketing and sales. This is how you actually connect your product or service to the customer. The people, this, this is your staff, who runs the business. Uh, the systems and processes, this is how you function. Uh, in my experience, uh, medical practices actually are very good at this part of, of the business element. Um, I've seen a lot of businesses out there um, and, and a lot of businesses, I, I must say, are not very strong on the systems and processes, but when I look at medical medical practices, they're, they're very good around that uh, system and process and, and how they engage the patient and then how they track all the information, the records that they keep and the software that you use. It's all very well, uh, well applied in, in your business. And then the finance. This really, at the end of the day, tells you whether or not you're getting the operational elements right. So you may have, you know, the the, the smartest looking outfit, but if the the money isn't there at the end of the day, then something's not right in that whole setup. Pull all that together into a business plan. Um, now, this is just a quick highlight on what every business should have, what every medical practice should have is is some business plan because again. This will help you to map out the type of KPIs that you need for your business. So in here we have a sustainable competitive advantage. Now your sustainable competitive advantage, this is the reason why your patients will continue to choose your practice over another practice. Um, you know, we're seeing that uh, in the region that I'm in, in uh, Mandurah, there's a, there's a lot of medical practices and so there's a lot of competition around and, and sometimes it, it seems like there's not as many patients to go around, yet the businesses keep still popping up. Uh, from an accounting perspective, uh, there's a lot of accounting practices in Mandurah as well and it seems like it seems to be this place that attracts a lot of uh, businesses probably because of the lifestyle uh, down our way. But um, at the end of the day, you've only got a certain size market that um, that you can sell your services too, so you need to look at why people would choose you. Um, in your business plan, you also need some key focus areas, and this will typically deal with either growth and or improvement of your business, and these will be what tie to your KPIs. Um, you'll, you'll need a SWOT analysis, which is the good old strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats, and it's always important to look at this for a business, and this is not something that you do every month or every six months, but it's something that you kind of set um, on an annual basis and you have a look, how, how are our strengths going? Are we dealing with our weaknesses? What opportunities do we have out there and what threats? Are we noticing any new threats in the, uh, in the marketplace? And then the fourth element of, of the business plan is the KPIs. And these are the key performance indicators that we can measure the business against. Are we achieving our objectives? Are we achieving what we set out to achieve? Um, and we want to put these in, into our business plan to say this is the benchmark or this is the standard or this is the target that we want to achieve. 
So your first takeaway for today, if you don't already have a business plan in place, can I encourage you to put down a couple of thoughts uh, on a bit of paper. I'll just give you a minute here, but the first thing is what's the sustainable competitive advantage of your practice? Um, you know, the, there's, I've seen practices out there that are bulk billing only with no appointment necessary. Now that's what they're putting themselves up in the marketplace and they always seem to have people in the waiting area. Um, I've seen other medical practices with a specialist skin clinic and that seems to um, drive uh, or draw people into their practice. So what is it about your practice that sets you apart or why is it that people choose to come to your practice? Um, interestingly enough, if you're the uh, only practice in, in town, then this might seem like a given that your sustainable competitive advantage is that we're the only doctors in town. Um, however, in a digital world, we're seeing that that can change. Uh, your competition may not necessarily come in the form of shop front. It may come by way of, of you know, the, the Skype doctor, um, which I assume is, is better than Dr. Google. So just take a minute, put down what you see your competitive advantage is, and then just have a think about what are a few areas, two or three areas of growth or improvement for your business. So are you thinking about developing a new service arm? Have you looked at a chronic disease management program? Um, are you looking at needing to reduce the cancellations of, uh, of, of, of patients or improve staff productivity? So think about where those areas of improvement that you would just, uh, on observation, say this is part of, um, this, is, this is something that we need to focus on. And if you don't have any ideas now, jot the question down and go away and think about it. Accounting 101, I promise not to bore you too much with this one. Uh, so where do we start? We start with the chart of accounts. Again, very important when we're doing KPIs and particularly those financial KPIs, have, have a chart of accounts which helps you extract the, the financial information easily, efficiently, effectively. So your KPIs are designed to support your financial reports, not the other way around. So you need to get the design of your financial reports right first so then the KPIs can support that. Um, and meaningful financial reports really start with the setup of your chart of accounts uh, in your bookkeeping software. Now, interestingly enough, um, bookkeeping software has, uh, in a sense, kind of um, sent us on, on a little bit of a uh, wild goose chase by putting in these recommended chart of account structures. Now, the, the chart of accounts, for those that um, may not be overly familiar with the concept, is, is really in bookkeeping software, when you spend, uh, when you spend your money or when you receive money, it's got to go to, the transaction needs to be allocated to an account. That's the chart of accounts. So it needs to, if you're receiving, um, you know, uh, say revenue from your patients, will go to your sales account or your revenue account. Um, if you're paying your rent expenses, uh, rent on your buildings, then that'll go to your rent expense account. And it's pretty, pretty straightforward type stuff. But What's happened is, is people have picked up um, the recommended uh, chart of account structure from bookkeeping uh, software, which is all well and good, but does it meet your needs uh, from, a, from an end user perspective, from a, the perspective of me wanting to look at these financial reports and say, uh, how is my business doing? Uh, how is it performing? And if I've got a myriad of uh, 50 plus accounts on that profit and loss, then it all of a sudden becomes a... Uh, uh, a confusing uh, page of information and then I start to look at, um, you know, just say the, the profit and, and then start to look at certain costs in there and start to obsess over the wrong things. So getting that design right is really important because it can lead to more efficient production of financial uh, reports or management reports really. Um, in my experience, most businesses don't have a chart of accounts um, uh, to meet their financial reporting needs. Um, it, it is something that has been built up over time and it's been added to by the myriad of bookkeepers um, before you and no one's ever really sat down and said, hey, let's clean up this mess and let's get it into, into the right sort of design. So get that design right. It gives you succinct reports which then lead to good KPIs. So how can it be improved? Well, here's, here's my tips for improving your charts. Um, the first thing is group your expenses into uh, your expense accounts into functional areas. When you look at a profit and loss, and let's say you see an A through to Z of expenses, A starting at accounting, and gee, we accountants hate seeing our fees up the top there because uh, it just always stands out. Through to you know W at the end is wages, and 
you know, those are the two areas that the uh, that the owners always look at. They go look at the top, look at the bottom, and they go, we pay too much in wages and we pay too much to the accountants. <laughs> and everything in between is just a whole jumble of, of noise and I'm not sure what to look at next. Um, group it into functional areas. So typically speaking, you'd look at, say, nine or so functional areas. You've got an employment function and if you employ people, you're going to pay wages. You're going to pay superannuation. Um, you know, you, you're going to possibly pay payroll tax. You're going to have staff amenities and so on. Why split all that stuff out? Why not group it and show it as one expense? It then becomes easier to report on. It becomes easier to budget and it becomes easier to compare. Um, secondly, group all your other accounts. So things like your income accounts or your balance sheet type accounts just into summary areas. Um, if you've got 20 different bank accounts, you don't necessarily need to show 20 different bank accounts in your balance sheet report. Yes, you need to track them in your business, but when you're reporting on it, you just need to show cash at bank. You know, that can be uh, quite a valid way of, of displaying a management report. And then thirdly, use the features in your bookkeeping software, such as things like categories of jobs. You know, you don't need to have every doctor's name listed in your chart of accounts to say, see how much income they're generating or how many patient fees they're, 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 they're charging. Um, you can use, uh, you can set your, your doctors up as jobs or categories. Um, or you could look at another way and say, well, let's set up our consulting rooms as, as uh, jobs or categories. And it's a way of trimming back the chart and getting more meaningful information out of your software at the end of the day. Uh, this next point is about cash flow versus profit. Uh, you, you've probably already heard the saying, uh, cash is king. Um, a business can survive longer with regular cash flow and no profit than with profit and no cash flow. And I've seen this firsthand. You know, I've seen the, the, you know, the, the spectacular crash of a business that had amazing profit but no cash flow. The debtors strung them out and, you know, they came to a, a crash very quickly. Um, but likewise, although you need cash, you still need profit at the end of the year. So, you know, don't forget that in, in, in setting your KPIs and looking at how the business is running. Make sure that you've always got an eye on how the cash is going, but also are we making money? And then reporting on the numbers, and I won't labour this point, but the keys to successful reporting is, is having a purposely designed uh, chart of accounts to fit your business. Make sure you've got some month-end procedures in place. If you set yourself targets to have reports done by a certain date, then you'll get them done by those dates. Um, always have comparisons in your reports. Always look at how you did last year, how you're doing against your budget, what are your targets. And then further to that, keep the design of your report simple. Um, again, I, if your P&L profit and loss goes over two pages and it's too big, it should be able to fit on half a page. Likewise with your balance sheet. Um, keep them simple, short and simple. Um, always try and prepare a cash flow statement because that tells you where the money is and, and whether you're tracking okay in terms of your income and expending. Um, report on your top three to five KPIs, uh, certainly include your business driver and we'll look at that in a little bit and report on your top three to five non-financial KPIs and we'll have a look at those KPIs later on. Um, and then look at a variance analysis. So if we've got some competitors like the budget um, or target, if we don't hit that, why? And provide a little bit of commentary on that. Now if you miss it by just a small amount then it probably doesn't necessitate any real uh, depth of, of analysis on it, but if, you, if you're way out on it, then you need to look into it. And how does this connect to improvement? Well, when we prepare a business plan with KPIs to establish a benchmark for the business, then we know what that benchmark is and what we're shooting for. When we prepare monthly management reports, uh, then we can start to track how we're going each month and whether we're seeing some level of improvement uh, around the business or whether we're identifying any, any issues or struggles. Um, you also can provide comments on any material variances which you mentioned and then you can put in a monthly action plan to address uh, those areas of pra uh, practice improvement. So if you notice that you say one of your KPIs is cancellations and your cancellations are steadily increasing, then you need to put in an action plan on how you're going to address and deal with that. So let's have a look at the target rate. What is the target rate? Well, the target rate is really about bringing back uh, the business to, to a single driver. What is it that drives my business? Um, and then when I understand what it is that drives my business, then I can figure out what it is that I need to sort of benchmark my business against. So we'll start with a cost function um, uh, in, in terms of building the target rate. Uh, to run our business, we, we broadly speaking have three, uh, three costs there. We have our overhead costs, 
um, when you're pulling this together, you just estimate an annual cost based on functional area. Now, when you simplify your chart of accounts, all of a sudden this process doesn't become so cumbersome and, and unwieldy. You can actually uh, set some targets pretty easily, pretty quickly. You know, if you look at, say, um, trying to predict out all your rent and rates and electricity and all that sort of stuff, it, it starts to be a number of accounts that you're trying to predict how much I'm going to spend in those. Whereas if you look at year on year grouping that into, a, a, say, an occupancy cost where you've got rent and rates and et cetera and so on all grouped in together and year on year you can see that you spend, you know, on average 80000 or $85,000 in that space, then that can be, be become your target. Okay, we, we expect that this will be the cost for next year or it might be that plus CPI. Labor costs. Uh, normally, we would estimate um, an annual cost by employee group. So you'll have different levels of employees, um, pay levels of employees within your business. You'll have, say, management, you'll have admin. Um, ignore the doctors at this stage because normally doctors take a percentage of the, the fee. So you just look at who you employ on wages and what that what that cost is. And then you know how many people are going to be in this team and you can figure out how much it costs you to, to employ people within your practice. And then the capital and finance costs. This part of it, you just estimate it based on an average rate of depreciation and an average rate of interest. So if I've borrowed um, $100,000 and I know my average interest rate is 5%, well then I can predict that I'm going to probably spend $5,000 in interest for the year. If I've got, uh, say, $200,000 worth of um, plant and equipment and fixtures and fittings and on average I'm depreciating at a rate of, uh, say, 15% per annum, then we'll take that as a metric as well and you'll, you'll predict that you've got about $30,000 worth of capital cost that you build into that function. Add those three together and that is the cost to run your business. So again, you can see we haven't put the doctor's cost in here, but this is actually the cost to run the business. Now, when working out our break-even point, let's say our cost to run the business is $500,000. So we add all those up to pay our rent, to pay our staff, to, um, to pay the other uh, parts of our business and our capital costs, et cetera, and so on. It costs us a, a nice round half a million dollars. You can see I've kept the, the math for myself pretty simple. Um, the next step we need to do is calculate the cost of sale. So what we do is we add what the doctor's percentage share is, um, our medical supplies percentage. So if your medical supplies are somewhat variable, depending on you know how many patients you see, you may not put them into your overhead cost, but you might put them into your cost of sale cost. So in this example, let's say you know the doctor's share is 60% of the fee, and our medical supplies uh, roughly work out to be about 5% of our total revenue, which means that our cost of sale will be 65%. In order to calculate our break-even sales, what we do is we take that $500,000 cost to run our business, we divide it by our gross profit margin, which is 100% minus 65%, so divide that by 35%, and we end up with a sales target of $1.4 million. So that's, that's our break-even point. If we don't make a $1.4 million in a year, then we run at a loss. So then we take that to the next level as part of this target rate analysis and we say, well, what is our break-even number of consults per week? So we get our sales, $1.4 million. We know that that's our, what we need to achieve and we divide that by our average consult fee. Now, we work that out based on what we did last year. So let's say our average consult fee is, is $50 a consult. And then we take our $1.4 million, we divide that by $50, to, uh, $50 per consult, or per consultation, and then we divide that by 52 weeks. And we work out that we need to see 549 patients per week. Now, that's not new patients, so they can be repeat visits. And that's where you look at, well, um, you know, a doctor might have a 1,000 patients on average, but his patients or her patients on average see them, you know, six times a year. So that's where our 549 consults per week. So break even, if we're not doing 549 consults a week or roughly 110 a day, then we're potentially going to run at a loss. Now, our output activity is the next element of the target rate. And this is in, important in understanding what drives your revenue. Uh, for a medical practice, I would suggest that your output activity would be that consultation. Uh, so we've looked at how to work the break even point out. Now we look at understanding a bit more about um, what it is that drives the business. A good place to start is really map out the sales process. So we advertise, there's an inquiry that comes in, and this is just a typical sort of flow through. This isn't maybe how it generally works with your um, practice, but we advertise, we get a phone call inquiry, a booking is made, the consultation happens, we then invoice, and the customer then pays us. 
So the internal driver, what drives this, is actually selling consultations. So we need to try and sell as many consultations as we can, or we need to increase the fee and try and recover as much per consultation as we can. So, and, and normally it's a balancing act between the two where we try and make sure we're reducing our, our, our missed consults and, it, and maximising our revenue per consult. So, and that comes down to looking at things like your Medicare uh, billing codes. And one of those KPIs just that you can sort of throw into there is perhaps looking at a diversity of items filled. So you might have your, you know, you'll know all the codes that each of the doctors are running on their on their practice and or with their patients and so on. Um, a, a good sort of metric to just sort of have a look at is is see what different codes each of the doctors are using. And then if there are some codes that one doctor's using that maybe two or three of the others aren't, then you can look at and say, well, why aren't they using it? Could we use these other codes to improve our rate of return per consultation? Uh, we also have external drive, driver, and the external driver is that the customer actually, or the patient actually needs the service. So they need to see the doctor. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to connect the service that they need to that patient. Um, and, and it's a good idea to report on both in order to improve the business. So let's have a quick look at an example here uh, of working out um, our sales uh, targets. So in, in this example here, the facts are we've got, say, five consultation rooms. We've got four full-time uh, practitioners who receive, uh, who pay a 40% management fee. Um, eight hours are available per day, five days a week. The standard consult is, uh, say, 15 minutes uh, at $70 and we sold 600 standard consults last week. Right? So the first question is, what is the business potential? Well, we've got five consultation rooms, so our business potential is based on the five consultation rooms. So if we take and do the, if we do the math on that, then we've got five consultation rooms. Um, now, we can effectively do 160 consults in a day if you, if you work out the, that you know, we've got eight hours available and there's 15 uh, minutes um, per consultation and you do the math on that, it works out to be um, uh, five, uh, sorry, uh, 160 um, consults a day, uh, sorry, per week rather, sorry, my, my fault on that one there. You've got 160 consults that you can do in a week um, and we've got five consultation rooms. So if we go and take that, uh, multiply that five by the 160, um, we can see, sorry, let me just, uh, Got a hand that's raised here. I'll just pause. Is there a question on that hand raised? Oh, sorry. Okay, uh, I'll keep going with this. So, uh, if we're looking at, there's 800 consults a week, um, and we've got $70 per consult. 52 weeks uh, of the year, 40% uh, management fee. It means that our potential is $1.16 million. Okay, so from the five consultation rooms, as a practice, after the doctor's share, we can generate up to $1.16 million of revenue. So what's our current capacity? Well, we move into the, the next part of this, and the current capacity is actually based on four full-time practitioners. So while we've got five consultation rooms, we've only got four full-time practitioners. So we take the same math there, we work out that we can do 160 uh, consults a day, um, but now we only multiply that by four instead of five, because we've only got four doctors. So that means that we, instead of being able to do 800 consults a week, we can only do up to 640 consults a week. At $70 a consultation, 52 weeks of the year, means that we will only revenue $930,000. So because we've got one room empty, we've lost $233,000 worth of revenue for the actual practice. So that's the second part of it. The third, third question is, what's the current efficiency? So the current, current efficiency is based on what we achieved recently. So our most recent was we sold 600 standard consults last week. Now, if we were to take that, we could, we could have sold up to 640. That was our capacity for four doctors. Um, which means that we fell 40, uh, 40 shy of that, 40 consultations shy of that. Now, if we take that through the $70 um, and 40% retention for the, for the medical practice, 
it means that we potentially lost a thousand dollars worth of revenue last week. Now that doesn't sound like a lot of coin to lose, but when you put that over a year, that's about fifty-eight thousand dollars of lost revenue if we're not hitting that, those efficiency targets there. So that's that's where you can take the target rate and use it as part of your business. So with your with your business, how do you calculate your target rate? Well, you look at the cost to run your business. You look at your break-even sales. So we, we put in that example of 500 grand to run your business, $1.4 million in break-even sales, required return to owner. If we look at that average of 26%, that's uh, that national average, then the math comes out to about half a million dollars is that profit. So when we're working at a target rate, we're not looking at a break-even now. We're looking at what the business needs to achieve in order to provide a return to our owners. So we then need to look at our average consult fee. And we do that based on what last year's sales were um, and how many consultations did we perform. And, and these are all broad averages, but that's what a KPI is. It's about the average. It's not about every specific uh, consultation and what you did. You know, one might be $100, one might be $30. But the average, say, in this practice is $50, uh, which means that when we look at calculating our target rate, it's $50 per consultation. So we have uh, on, on, say, 52 weeks of the year with five days a week and um, $1.4 million in break-even sales and half a million dollars in profit, it means that we need to achieve 146 consults per day, which if we've got six rooms, that's 24 consulta uh, consultations per treatment room, or if we've got, say, five and a half full-service equivalent doctors, it's, 20, uh, it's, it's 26 and a half consults per doctor. So that's our target rates. Moving into KPIs and benchmarking, and I'm mindful that that time is slipping away on me here, but we'll, we'll now look at tying this in. So with KPIs for the modern practice, uh, when you're designing and building them, they should be focused on practice improvement. These, these are sort of things that I would look at with it. They need to engage all staff members. They need to be achievable. They need to leverage off your software. There's no point trying to track KPIs if you can't get the data easily and, and, and readily. If you have to spend three hours to try and work it out, then possibly it's not worthwhile working out because uh, that's three hours of, of lost time on the, the internal production of your, of your business. Um, so that, and that's the that next point. They need to be highly accessible, not relying on cumbersome processes. Uh, they need to provide powerful insights. If they don't give you a, a, an insight uh, around how your business is traveling, then they may not be that useful. They need a clear connection to your business purpose. So don't track KPIs just for the sake of tracking. They need to come back to what is the purpose of your business. Um, they need to be consistent. They need to be uh, prepared over a long period of time. Um, and you need to have a balance between both the financial and the non-financial. In terms of clustering and stacking, this is about being able to group different types of KPIs together. So if we, if we need to be, say, achieving in this example here, 146 consults a day, then, um, and, and we're not achieving that, well then we start to look at some of those other KPIs that will tell us why we may not be achieving that. So we'd look at, say, what about appointment runovers? What about cancelled appointments? And, and so on and so forth. And you can pull those together to paint a picture around your business. And just remember, less is more. Don't try and track everything out there. Less is more in this space. So where to start? A really good place to start is with uh, the Rural Health West. Uh, fact sheet and after the um, webinar, Beth will uh, send that out to all participants. Um, if you Google up KPIs for GP practice, this will be the first result that will come out. And it's actually a very good, it is a very good guide and it's something I've looked over and, and I would say it would work well with, with applying it to your practice. Um, review your strategic plan. If you don't have one, uh, sit down with your doctors and build one. Uh, discuss and summarise what the owner's needs are. Uh, review the business operational elements which we went through. Those are the products and services, the marketing and sales, you know, and look at the KPIs that feed each of those elements that, that go up to make your business. Um, prepare a list of all the ideal KPIs for your practice. Now, you're not going to track everything. This is just that, that wish list. Then review the capabilities of your software and what data you're currently capturing. If you're not capturing the information at the moment, then chances are you won't be uh, able to, to work out that KPI. Then select the top five to report on. So this isn't the top, this isn't all that you're going to track, but the top five that you want to report on. And set up a template to calculate it automatically. Automate as much as possible. Don't go into, um, you know, don't go and try and manually do it and replicate that process every month because you'll just be wasting your own time. Look at what your software can do. Your practice management software probably has reports in there that you've never seen before and probably has some dashboards that you could be able to access some of this um, uh, information from. 
So what are my must-haves on the KPIs? The target rates uh, and an efficiency rate. So if I'm looking at consults, I want to know, as my main driver to my business, I want to know what am I making per consultation and what, how many consultations am I, am I recovering, say, per day, and per doctor or per room? Uh, and then am I on track with what my target is? And then just measuring that as a, as a sort of a monthly, weekly come monthly type uh, metric. Some suggested non-financial KPIs. Now, there are a myriad of uh, different KPIs that you can track and you can Google yourself and find that, you know, the list is as long as your arm out there. Um, but certainly the important thing is to have a reason why you're tracking the data. It needs to be connected to your practice improvement. It needs to have, or connected to staff accountability, or it needs to be connected to your business strategy, or it needs to be connected to delivery of outcomes for your patients. Um, be consistent in your tracking. Don't chop and change each month with what you're tracking. Make it easy to capture. The harder it is to dig up the data, the less likely it is for your team to track the KPI because you're already busy enough as it is. Uh, have a benchmark or target that you, you, you're comparing your KPI against. So if you don't know what you should be achieving, then there won't be a lot of context to the KPI. So make sure there's some sort of target or, or, or benchmark that you're comparing it against. Um, and communicate the results. If you don't communicate the results, then again, there's not a lot of point to tracking them. So you communicate them to staff if, if it's about accountability, or you communicate them to the owners if it's about uh, how the business is performing. And this list is, is just some of my suggested non-financial KPIs. Certainly, I would be looking at what my missed appointments were, uh, what my average appointments running on time uh, was, or what my, say, how many minutes late on average are my appointments. Um, non-appointment patient follow-up, so I might be looking at, you know, this is uh, not to do with following up whether or not they're coming to the appointment, but following them up between appointments, um, uh, perhaps to generate, you know, um, more services or, or that, that patient care, meet that patient care metric that you might have set as, a, as one of your targets. Um, unfilled appointments, uh, consulting rooms available time, and you can see the list there. there. There's a whole raft of them that you can look at, and I'll be picking them up, the ones that are going to help me improve my business, as well as meet the objectives of, of what my business is. Some suggested financial KPIs, uh, these are the fees per patient, uh, or fees per consultation. So this is the dollars and cents side of, of the KPIs. And and on this list here, again, I would be really anchoring back to my target rate and what am I achieving per consultation and then looking at the profitability of my business. I'd also have in there something around my cash as well and I'd be looking at, okay, well, what's my average bank balance? Am I, have I got lazy cash in the bank or am I always stretched on my um, cash uh, requirements? And then analytics, make sure you review the data to track potential um, improvements and so on. Um, example of analytics, you, you could look at things like geographical location, age group of patients, referral source, occupation, health risk, all that sort of stuff. So does your software database capture this information and do you do anything with it? And there is stuff that you can do with that as well. And then benchmarking, I often get asked about benchmarking and people want to know, you know, how am I doing against other businesses? Well, with benchmarking, if you want to know how you're going against your average and that's what you're benchmarking yourself against, then you will be quite possibly average. Um, so I would always say benchmark against you, yourself internally. Use your targets, set targets and try and hit and achieve those targets. Make sure they're connected to your practice and, and then look for areas of, of improvement. When looking externally and say, you know, on average a practice, um, um, you know, is returning 26% or on average the doctor out, a doctor out there would see a thousand patients a year, these are more just how does my practice compare against that but not driving the improvement. It might just highlight the, the difference of your practice or might highlight that, yeah, we're, we're relatively on track with the type of uh, business that we're in. In terms of analysing the data, now, um, I have a bit of a spreadsheet around this one here, which I'll quickly flick up. And it's just a sample on a management report. This just will highlight how a P&L can be quite simple. So 
So if we look at this here, this is where we look at, say, the nine functional areas of the business. When you start looking at this, the data becomes a lot easier to read and interpret, and then the variance analysis becomes a lot easier to do. The budgeting becomes a lot easier to do, and the KPI tracking becomes a lot easier to do. So in this example here, this would be, say, my example of a profit and loss that I would prepare as part of my management reports where I track my month and my budget and then some year to dates and so on. And you see I haven't broken out the doctor's income or contributions in this part. I don't think it's important at the p &L level. I think that's more of a management type report. If we look at say the balance sheet, again the balance sheet is short and simple. We report on some key assets, we report on some key liabilities and then we report on the equity that each of our doctors have in the business. Um, a cash flow report, um, keep it trim and simple. We're looking here around the uh, collections, you know, just what are your operating cash flows? We already have reported up here with the P&L where our money's coming from and where we're spending it. Now we just need to know what's coming in and what's going out and what, broadly speaking, uh, areas they relate to. Um, and then you have a, a commentary box on, on any variances that you want to comment on if they're, if they're significant or material. Uh, the management data is where I'd break out how my doctors are performing. And this is where I'd say, well, this is now a bit more detail around, say, how many consults they're doing, what they achieved per consult, what their fees were for last month and year to date, et cetera, and so on. You could also even look at some graphs around uh, the fees per area. And then the final part is the KPIs. And this is where you'd present your KPIs, your financial and your non-financial. And you see we've kept it pretty trim, just three on, on each of them, really. And in, in these ones here, we're looking at, you know, what's, what's our missed and cancelled appointments, what's running on time, and how many new patients are we seeing. The focus of this one here will be trying to make sure that we're not, uh, that we're meeting our, our, our bookings target of, of getting 146 appointments a day. Um, plus also it's a focus of, say, growing the business. We want to make sure that we're seeing new patients come into the business um, because if we're not seeing them, someone else is. Uh, and then some of your financial KPIs, well, what's the return? Are we on track with our return? Uh, if, we, if we do have debt, uh, what's our debt to equity ratio looking at? And then what does it cost uh, the practice against the fee that we recover? And that's sort of a reverse of that EBIT there. So those two kind of reverse each other. But then we can see the, the breakdown of that. 44% is employee cost, 18% is overhead, and 10% is direct cost. So that is a bit of an example around how a management report can look and how you can actually use that data to start to uh, you know, present where the business is sitting at and how on track you are. In terms of improving your efficiency and effectiveness, this, this is where you can use your data to get that happening. Um, so on that there, I would say prepare an information systems map. How does information flow through your business and why is it important? It will help to identify any inefficiencies. Uh, where do you start with this? Start by just actually listing out what software you've got and how that software uh, speaks to each other and, if, and where are the manual interventions in that. And then also, also start with mapping out the patient process. How does a patient engage with your practice and what's that look like? And then when you start to map these things out, you can start to identify areas for improvement or opportunity. Um, so your takeaway for that will be actually list the main software programs that you use and map them out, how they re relate with each other. And this can actually start to lend itself towards improving the software. Maybe your software isn't meeting the needs or maybe you can't get the data out that you need to, to run the KPIs. Um, or maybe conversely, you'd never really looked into it and you find that the software has a lot more capability than you first realised. Um, the second part to improving your efficiency is knowing your role. Make sure staff know their role. You know, when we talk about KPIs around staff accountability, um, perhaps, you know, for reception, you could look at uh, scanning of documents. You know, do they make sure that all documents are scanned in uh, by the end of the day? Um, do they make sure that all contact, patient contact details are updated and so on? So these, this is where we can tie KPIs into understanding what, where you fit in the business, what your role is in the business. Track your budget, seems like a basic, but set budget, track against it and see how you're going. Um, you know, if, you, if, you've, if you've got Dr. Bob and uh, he's committed to working full time and all of a sudden he goes part time, well this is going to impact your return for the year on the business and what are you going to do to, to respond to that. Practice resources, understand that your consultation rooms are a resource. Your database of information is, is a key resource and 
quite often is uh, is, is underutilized in, in in a lot of businesses. Their databases are, and the underutilization can actually be a cost to the business itself. Um, and then your practice management software, uh, so that might tie into your database, or they might be tracked separately. And back in the 1980s, uh, Toyota developed a seven waste reduction. Google this. Uh, it's a way of actually helping to improve the efficiency uh, and uh, and effectiveness of your business and practice. And this is where, again, KPIs will tell you: Are you making those improvements or not? So let's uh, put it out there. Any any questions? So that's sort of a, a zoom through on the KPIs. Hopefully, hopefully you got something out of that, and you have a bit of an action plan to walk away with for today and uh, I apologise for zooming through that last part of uh, efficiency and effectiveness but I uh, just wanted to cover off on the data but are there any questions that anyone would like to ask uh, before we um, close out? That was great Matthew, very informative, thanks very much. Um, very comprehensive and able to be condensed into one hour too. Letting everybody know that we have made a recording of the webinar this afternoon, so we'll place it on our website. So if you would like to revisit it at any time or if you would like to share it with your colleagues too. Um, I note that we do have one question that's um, popped up um, asking if the participants will receive a copy of the demo um, or the slides. So um, I'll chat to Matthew offline about that and um, see if he's happy to share those. Um, Matthew and I will stay online just for a little bit longer, so if you're still happy to um, uh, put through any questions to him whilst he's still online, uh, otherwise um, you can sign off now too. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for attending.